happened to the Yeah, the Oh, there it is. Right here. Okay, well, then we'll just put this one back on this one. Yeah. Forgive the... Well, I am thankful to have a a man like Pat around to, uh, when we need something fixed, there's the man. So, I don't, oh. <laughs> it's one of those mornings. One of those mornings. Uh, it's great to have everybody here. Uh, great to have everybody watching online. And I just welcome everyone. And we will begin this morning with our call to worship. I invite you to stand if you're able. Can everybody hear me okay out there? Okay. Come all who labor and are weighed down with responsibility uncertainty and worry. We come because the load we carry is heavier than we can bear alone. Come all you who seek to relate work and worship, leisure and service into a meaningful whole. We gather for spiritual renewal and practical challenge, for health in making choices carrying out our commitments. Come sinner and saint with hatred, with your hatreds and loves, your failures and successes, your sorrows and joys. We respond to the Spirit's leading and open ourselves to receive God's gracious gifts. And while you're standing, we will now recite our opening prayer in unison. O oh, Lord Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, full of compassion and maker of peace, you lived in poverty and suffered persecution for the sake, cause of justice. You chose the cross as the path to glory to show us the way of salvation. May we receive the word of the gospel joyfully and live by your example as heirs and citizens of your kingdom. Amen. And now, we will hear from our praise team. Good morning. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, this song is a variation on a hymn that many of you all will know. It's a little different, but I like it because it's, it's worshiping God. And just so you know, a diadem is a crown, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Oh, 
and worries and diseases and situations and futures. Um, we recognize that the worst thing is never the last thing. Um, we thank you for the hope that you give us in Jesus by raising him from the dead. And we honor you today as, as Lord of all. Amen. Jesus 
said where I'm going, um, there's a mansion with many rooms, and I'm saving one for you. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am to your neighbor. Thank you very much. I love that song. I love that song. First time I heard that was on my Emmaus walk. And that song was, God placed it there at the, at the right time. And it was just, every time I hear that song, I think back to that time. Uh, our children's message will be from Douglas this morning. Um, Are you ready? There we go. Hey guys, it's me, Douglas. And hey, check out this cool armor I made. Yeah, I made it out of cardboard. Because today I wanted to talk to you about the armor of God. Now, I don't know about you, but... I think that knights in shining armor are super cool. And back in the day, soldiers used to wear armor to protect themselves in battles. And their armor was made out of like iron or steel. Like my, my armor is made out of cardboard, so it wouldn't work very well as real armor, but it's still fun to make. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you are a Christian, then you are in a battle and you need armor. You don't need steel armor or certainly not cardboard armor. You need the armor of God. Spiritual armor. Yeah, because see, the Bible says that our battle is not against flesh and blood. No, our battle is against the spiritual forces of evil. Our battle is against Satan, not against people. Sometimes it really feels like our battle is against people because there's all kinds of people out there who really don't like us. If you're a Christian, there's going to be people who don't like you. That's just the way it is. It's kind of sad, but that's the way it is. But even if people hate you and they say that they're your enemy, they're not. Satan is your enemy. And Satan might use people against you, but in the end, they're not the ones we're supposed to fight. Our battle isn't against them. It's a spiritual battle, not a physical one. And so you need spiritual armor. You need the armor of God. Now, the armor of God is spiritual, but that doesn't mean that it's, like, magical, right? No, when it's time for a spiritual battle, you don't just say, I summon the armor of God. No, that's not how it works. No, the Bible says that the, the armor of God is the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace and the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Now again, all these things that I'm showing you right now, these are just pieces of cardboard. These are not the armor of God. It's just a cool craft and a fun visual. No, you can't see the armor of God, but it's there to protect you. And again, you don't just 
summon it magically. They've got, you know, the, the bits of the armor of God have cool names, but it's more than just a cool name. The name is the thing. What it is, is your armor. Let me explain. So like the breastplate of righteousness, the body armor of righteousness, that means that your righteousness acts like body armor. It's not just a fun name. It is what it is. And righteousness means doing what is right. So if you have the breastplate of righteousness, that means that you are doing what is right. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, if you're living your life the way God has called you to, then you've got a strong breastplate of righteousness. And so like the belt of truth, you're supposed to stand up for what is true. You're supposed to say what's true and not lie and not cheat. Feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace means that you should always be ready to share the gospel with anyone that you meet. Ready, willing, and able. If you're not ready to share the gospel, it's like running into a battle without any shoes on. And the shield of faith, your faith acts as a shield. You should know very strongly what you believe and why you believe it. So that when Satan starts throwing stuff at you, when Satan starts starts shooting you know, metaphorical arrows at you, you can block them with your shield. You can say, I know what's true. I know what I believe. Those arrows aren't getting through my shield. And the helmet of salvation, that has more to do with what God has done for you than what you do in your life. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says that if you speak with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's the most important piece of armor you can have, and it only comes through Jesus Christ. And the sword of the Spirit is the word of God, your Bible. Your Bible is like a sword, and just like a soldier needs to practice with his sword to be good at it and know how to use it, you should be reading your Bible and practicing it every day, reading God's word so that you know it through and through. You know what God says. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would put on the full armor of God. And you know, prayer is a big part of that. God would love to help you strengthen your armor. Jesus wants us to put on the full armor of God so that when Satan comes at us with his schemes, we'll be able to stand our ground. All right, thank you. Uh, now we will move into our joys. What joys do you have this morning?
praises and our prayers. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you give us. And Lord, just help us hold those blessings close to us when tragedy and turmoil occur in our lives. Help us to always remember, Lord, that you're in control, that you're there to give us the strength, the courage, the guidance that we need. And Lord, we lift up to you the many prayer concerns that are in our hearts, the ones spoken out loud. And Lord, we just put them in your hand. We know, Lord, that you are the great physician, that all things are possible because of you, Lord. We know that you're, you're a God of miracles. And Lord, just we place those who are, who are hurt, who are sick, who are just dealing with, there are there's so many things, Lord, out there going on that, that needs your intervention. And Lord, we just ask you to be with those who are, who are, who are, who are troubled, who are hurt, Lord. Just be with them, give them the strength they need, give them the, the hope that they need, Lord. And Lord, we, we especially right now, Lord, lift up Jayden and his family, Lord, and just ask you to, to comfort him as he comes to terms with what's happened, Lord, and just be with him as he recovers and with the pain, both physically, Lord, and also that mental pain that comes with injuries, Lord. Just comfort him and comfort his family. And, and Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to just give us the strength we need. And, and Lord, just be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, let us now recite the Lord's Prayer as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. I apologize about that. I had one of those moments where, you know, those moments where the Lord kind of just bumps you a little bit because you need it, and then you kind of lose your focus for a moment. Um, now we will recite the uh, Apostles' Creed, and you can follow along on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we will hear from Brother Pat and Sister Amanda, page 451. 
And thank you for filling in, by the way. And thank you. Oh, yes, please stand if you're able. Thank you. You uh, may be seated. I am not an artist, but I really enjoy art of all forms. Paintings, pottery, glass. It all has a story. Every work of art, there's a story behind it. There used to be a pottery studio inside of a great coffee shop in Fairmont. I really miss that place. It was called, it, uh, it was a fun place to stop in. Just the atmosphere was, was great. I used to stop in sometimes before I would go to my office, paper, the, the newspaper, because it was right down the block downtown for the paper office. And I'd grab me an Americano coffee Gave me the jolt I needed to, because it's espresso. So it gave me the jolt I needed. And I would, while waiting in line, would see all this beautiful pottery on display. And sometimes, if I would stop in in the middle of the day, you could watch folks making pottery, spinning their potter's wheel, molding their clay into a piece of art. It was amazing to watch that clay. Sometimes they had couches in there, and so sometimes I would sit on the couch and just drink a cup of coffee and, and, and watch through the, the doorway and watch that clay transform right before my eyes. No matter how beautiful artwork is, no matter, no matter how beautiful pieces of art are, none of these pieces of art can compare with God's masterpiece. 
Well, brothers and sisters, I'm not talking, uh, referring to like our majestic mountains. While they are beautiful, I'm not referring to that. Or the mighty river. I'm talking about the human race. And today, we're going to learn that each and every one of us is a divine masterpiece formed in love and transformed by grace. Let us hear the word of the Lord first in Psalm 139, verses 1 through 8. And then we will go to 13 through 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This song celebrates God's vast knowledge. The psalmist marvels that God can be far and yet so near. And we see that referenced in verse 2. The psalmist also meditates on God's constant presence in every circumstance, always. I'll be honest, I find it truly amazing. And I find myself rejoicing how it is possible to feel God's presence and even see God messages, no matter what is happening at the moment. And no matter where you are. Even in those darkest times. When you feel like you're alone. And you feel like the world is caving in around you. God is still there. And you may not. I, I don't know about you all. But for me. I may not realize it at the moment. But then later when I reflect back. God was there the whole time. And I, and I marvel about that. How he is present. You can feel him and see his messages no matter what. And then at the end of our reading, we were reminded of how God knew all about us even before we were born. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 references this as well. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And this ties in to the main part of the message today. We are all a divine masterpiece. Formed. Transformed. And shaped by God. Family, we are all recipients of his love. And of his grace. We have been spending time in Jeremiah over the last few weeks. I find Jeremiah to be a fascinating book. While Jeremiah is a, 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 a warning, and it's dark, there's still a lot of hope there. And I, and I read somewhere, I forget where I read it, how Jeremiah may be difficult to read, and it, and it is difficult, because you're seeing God's judgment occur here. These people are being warned but they're not listening. 
But yet, while you're seeing judgment occur now, when you read the rest of the Bible, you see hope. And you have to, you know, remember that. And I find it interesting, fascinating, because you have this extraordinary person whom the Lord called to be a prophet. And at various times, Jeremiah found himself challenging the religious hypocrisy, the economic dishonesty, and oppressive practices of Judah's leaders and those who followed them. You see, a nation in crisis, a nation whose people had decided to go at it alone. They decided they didn't need God. And there were a lot of parallels to us in the world we live in. Jeremiah was a vo with the voice of warning. He was sounding a big alarm. Jeremiah was persistent in delivering a message that no one wanted to hear. And it was unwelcome. Jeremiah, though, had a tenacious faithfulness in carrying out God's instruction. Even though he was facing unrelenting opposition and harsh criticism, the false prophets ridiculed him and insisted that God would never let the city of Jerusalem fall to an invader. And there are parallels here. We've been studying Daniel on Wednesday nights. And there are parallels there between what happens in the book of Daniel. You know, Daniel was also very tenacious. He had a tenacious faithfulness. And he was facing all these obstacles. I mean, how many times did Nebuchadnezzar turn his back on him and deny what he was saying and ridiculed him? And, you know, and then how many times did he turn to him? Quite a bit. So let's turn now to Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done? Says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plan it. But if it does not, but if it does evil in my sight and listen, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I intended to do to it. No, now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord, look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now all of you from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I mentioned at the beginning about the coffee shop. They used to have a pottery studio on site. That coffee shop also sold a lot of the pottery made in that studio. And a lot of it was very expensive. There were pieces that went for over $100, which I know for artwork, $100 isn't always a lot, but to me it was. And I couldn't help but think, man, that's a lot of money to spend. Man, where... You know, it must be nice to have all that extra money to go and 
<laughs> and buy that kind of stuff. But I couldn't help but think how it's really nothing but clay. It wasn't like it was a gold or silver item. But as I reflect back, really what you're paying for is the love, the care, the creative process, the meaning behind the item. Those are what give the work its value. We have to remember that an almighty creator formed us in love. And that makes us valuable, brothers and sisters. Just think of the care that God took in making Adam from the dust of the ground. I have a vivid imagination. And I can't help but think. Imagine God having a work apron on as he was sculpting what would become of this man. You know, did he carefully sculpt his nose? Did he use a tool to shape the detail of Adam's eyelashes, his eyebrow? How exactly did God craft the heart in the muscles inside Adam's body. You know, those are, but it's amazing when you think about it. What God's handiwork did then. What God's creativity did then. Adam was a masterpiece when God was finished with him. And so are you. Each and every one of us have stood there and God has had his apron on and he's worked on crafting John's nose, his eyes, his heart. And he did the same thing for each and every one of you. Let's go back to our reading from Psalm 139, verse 13. King David wrote, For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. We too have been formed in love and are a divine masterpiece. But sadly, we don't always see ourselves that way. Instead of thanking God for what he's made, I'm guilty of this sometimes where I kind of am like, really God, why? Why'd you make me, you know? Well, God made us the way, each of us, the way he wanted us to be. He made me the way I am. And he did so in love. And he did the same thing for each and every one of you. Let us rejoice like King David sang in verse 14 of Psalm 139. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. We also have to remember, because God created each one of us to be a divine masterpiece, just like I have, I, I, I collect glass. And I have some different, I, have, I, I collect mostly glass, like bottles and things. There was a, a glass plant in Fairmont that, I'd, spe I'd look for particularly Owens, Illinois glass. I know what to look for at the bottom of it. And they made everything. Ink bottles, ketchup bottles, Coke bottles, you name it. Well, when I transported those here, I had to take great care in making sure they were wrapped up and got here without breaking. I put them in a place where my cat can't get to them. Well, we have to remember that that same kind of care that we take when it comes to material works of works of I mean glass is a work of art. Somebody had to craft that 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 jar, that bottle, that item, so that it would be in the shape that it needed to be in. Well, just like you would take care for a valuable 
piece of art that you might own, we also have to remember to take that same care with one another because each one of us is a work of art created by God. To judge someone because of the way they look, it is not only outright hate, it's also sinful because you're making fun of God's handiwork. You wouldn't dare go to an artist and question, what is that? What process, what, can, what made you make that? What is it? You wouldn't go to an artist and be critical, would you? No, because you wouldn't want to hurt their feelings. But then why is it that you'll go and hurt someone else when you're hurting God, you're, you're hurting God. You're sinning because he made that person. He crafted that person. He sculpted that person. But on the flip side, we have to remember, while God formed us in love, we have been deformed by sin. God illustrated for the prophet Jeremiah what sin had done to the Israelites. In verse 4, while Jeremiah was watching a potter at work, he witnessed how the clay and the potter's hands started to spoil. That was just like the Israelites. God had taken them in his hands to be a special vessel to carry his word and the promise of a Messiah. But the Israelites, they didn't want any part of it. They had their own ideas for worship. It was more convenient for them to worship other gods than to faithfully make the trip to Jerusalem to worship the one true God. And we are so much like those Israelites. God formed us to value what he values. His word, our fellow Christians, and the lost who don't know Jesus. But so often we value what society does. Power, prestige. Instead of loving our neighbors, we curse them. So what should God do with us defective pieces of clay? In the rest of verse 4, instead the potter worked his defective piece of clay into something that was useful. And this is also God's response to us, to our sin. He transforms us by grace. We need God's grace because we can't fix our, our defects, our sin defects, any more than a piece of clay can transform itself into something beautiful. We need God, the master potter, to do it. And that's exactly what he is doing when he calls us to repent. We're about, here in a, here in a few minutes, going to have, going to part, you know, partake in the sacrament of communion. Communion is a time for us to come to the Lord and humble ourselves and repent. Grow closer to him. Give our burden to him. By repenting, by partaking in the sacrament of communion, you can invite the Holy Spirit into your life to transform it. But sadly, we can also block the Holy Spirit's efforts. And that's what the Israelites did. This was their response to God's call to repentance through the prophet Jeremiah in verse 12. But they say, it is no use. We will follow our own plans, and each of us will act according to the stubbornness of our evil will. The Israelites said they cannot change their simple ways. It's not that they could not change their ways with God's help. They did not want to change. And family, could that be the same reason why you're dealing with difficulties in your own life? For example, maybe God is sculpting you to be more loving 
more patient than you were yesterday. But you're refusing to be transformed because, well, you've done all you can. I could write a book about how many times I've said that before. Oh, I'm God, I've done what I can. I can't do any more. Well, that's not how it works. We're not finished products. John is not a finished product ready for display in God's heavenly display case. None of us are ready for display in God's heavenly display case. We're not finished products. We're still spinning around and around on that gigantic potter wheel called earth. God is using our, what, our time here on this earth to, to craft us with his hands to, to squeeze out those air bubbles that sometimes comes into play. And those bubbles are like pride. He's popping those out so that he can continue to form us. If we don't think we need any further transformation, then we're like that, that old clay that you'd see on the floor. It's hardened. That clay cannot be used for anything beautiful because it's dried up. It's crumbling. If you pick it up, it's gonna pieces of it are going to crumble. Such clay cannot turn into anything beautiful. As long as, as long as it stays out of the master potter's hand. The God who formed us in love is now transforming by his grace so that we may forever enjoy his love and peace. So in closing today, let us remember open our hearts up to God and let him work. Let him keep us on that wheel. Let him use his hands to craft us and sculpt us. Let him work. Don't let yourself fall on that ground and become hardened and crumbled. Let the Holy Spirit work. Let the Holy Spirit transform. Use this time we're about to have to come to God and give him your whole heart. Not just half, your whole heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord. Help us to be the clay that can be crafted. Help us, Lord, to stay on that wheel with you. Help us to allow you to shape us, transform us. Help us to remember, Lord, that we are a divine masterpiece created by you. Help us, Lord, to allow you and your Holy Spirit into our hearts so that we can work to become better people, to become better than we were yesterday. Help us, Lord, to remember that not only are we divine masterpieces, but those around us are as well. Help us to not judge. Help us to not be critical. Help us to, to remember that the same love and care that you put into creating us, you put that same love into care into that person near us. Lord, we're about ready to partake in communion here. Help us to humble our hearts, to open our hearts, to repent, and to admit, Lord, that we've fallen short. Help us to allow you to scoop us up in your arms and to lift us back up again onto that wheel. 
And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I'm, you fold them, right? Okay. I'm going to experiment here. Put this on for communion. Oh, uh, oh, I saw the ministry announcements. We'll, we'll have communion and then we'll, you can make your announcement of that, okay? So I'm not the only one. We'll be on page 12 in the hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, let us uh, in unison. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with all our heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will, broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us pray, take a moment for silent prayer. Here are the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. It's so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us with a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. It's through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Um, uh, um, yeah, why don't you come up? I didn't. Re- I forgot that I. Well, next, how, you and uh, Debbie. We'll have you guys do it next time. then um, all are welcome at the table and the altar is open.
hearts and minds clear. Now we'll have our Gary had an announcement. So it's another month, so I'm here to try to be your cheerleader, <laughs> um, to encourage you to um, keep up the good work with the shoe boxes. We are well on track to getting 500 boxes this year. Um, it's so cool. I feel like I'm harvesting at the end of a season, so I'm so excited for October when we get to have our, our packing parties and stuff. So anyway, um, I know a lot of you are donating money um, or buying items, but the item of the month I want you guys to think about um, are something that all of us wore today on our feet. Um, a lot of folks that God created and is, are wonderfully and fearfully made were born in a country or in situations where they're not as blessed as we are, and some of these kids don't have shoes. So flip-flops are really cheap right now, <laughs> and they have sandals on sale, um, so that's what I would encourage you to do. I have a brief story with a couple slides to remind you about this this week. Um, it's been five years ago, um, I was invited by Scott Knowlton, Steve Gora went to on a very informal six day mission trip to Haiti. Um, one day we were out delivering rice and beans to folks and this kid just dropped to the ground and started screaming. I thought he got stung by a bee or something, but it turns out he stepped on something like a piece of glass and lacerated the bottom of his foot. A couple days earlier, we had worked at a medical clinic. I had brought some medical supplies and offered to give it all to them, and they said, you know what, why don't you keep the one suture kit just in case, because you're here for another few days. So my grandma would call that a God wink. Um, so we had an extra uh, suture kit at our place, so they drove me back to the place. I got the suture kit, and I did a little minor surgery <laughs> in a field and scared a whole bunch of kids when I injected the lidocaine. <laughs> And you can show the next slide. Um, Molly was a nurse practitioner with us too. So she had some socks. We were able to get him a pair of shoes so this doesn't happen again. So his name is Evanson. So it's just a little reminder uh, about why we do this today. So thanks for your support. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Uh, we have our Bible study Wednesday at 6 at Friendly. We're still in Daniel. And then I'm excited on the 11th starts youth group at 530 here at the church. And then at 630 we launch our new Sunday evening service in the chapel downstairs. And that is going to be a praise, testimony, if anybody wants to share a devotion, but the main part of it is going to be, it's going to be a prayer service. And we have two crosses that have been placed in the, in that chapel. And I'm going to, I have some fish net, fishing net coming to put on those crosses because um, we're going to, I'm going to have yarn down there. So if you have a prayer need, you can go, I'll have it cut, and you can cut off a piece of yarn and put it, tie it to the prayer, to the, to the cross. And we'll pray over, pray over those needs. And then also, when uh, a prayer is answered, there'll be a white yarn down there where you could tie a piece of white yarn. So it'll be, I believe it'll be fun and amazing to see, we'll get to see hopefully get to see a bunch of white in there as time goes on to kind of see how God is working there. A friend of mine does that in Point Pleasant, and it's amazing to see his cross and see you have all these prayer needs, and then you see all this sea of white where the prayers have been answered. And it's neat to experience that. So it'll... Um, We'll have music and, and 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 worship time, and it'll be. I hope I hope to have a good turnout for both churches. It'll be about an hour. That'll be at six thirty on uh, September eleventh. 
before starting that. Um, I see that the women meet at 6.30 on the 13th. That's on here. Um, but any other announcements? And now we'll have our final hymn. Please rise if you're able. Oh, and before I forget, don't forget that there's a sign-up back here for the youth group to provide uh, dinner for the kids. As we leave here today, let us remember that we are, we are being shaped by the master potter, that we're all on that wheel being shaped and transformed by our Lord and Savior. And let us leave here and remember that we are divine masterpieces created by God. Go in peace. Amen.